Victoria Melita was the daughter of Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh and Saxe Coburg, and Grand Duchess Marie Alexandrovna of Russia. She therefore had two illustrious grandparents, Queen Victoria and Tsar Alexander II. At the time of Victoria's birth, her father was serving in the Royal Navy. Her childhood was spent at various naval bases and in a rented house, Eastwell Park, in Kent. She and her siblings also traveled with their mother to her native Russia, where Victoria fell in love with one of her cousins, Cyril Vladimirovich Romanov. Queen Victoria, always planning advantageous marriages for her grandchildren, thought the Romanovs too foreign for consideration. The husband she chose for Victoria was another cousin, Grand Duke Ernest of Hesse. They were married on 19th of April, 1894. Ernest was a reluctant bridegroom, and on the day of the wedding, his sister Alex rather stole the couple's thunder by announcing her own engagement to Tsesarevich Nicholas, soon to be Tsar Nicholas. The marriage of her sister-in-law to the next Russian emperor was to shape much of Victoria's future life. Cyril Vladimirovich was aware of Victoria's feelings for him and reciprocated them, but he held out no hope for their future. He was a serving officer in the Russian Navy, traveling the world. She was married to Ernest, and divorce was unthinkable. To the amazement of those who knew Ernest's sexual preferences, it was common knowledge that he was attracted to men, Victoria became pregnant. Their daughter, Elizabeth, was born in March 1895, and Ernie proved to be a besotted father. Victoria and Ernest proved incompatible. Victoria despaired of her husband's lack of affection towards her, while Ernest devoted much of his attention to their daughter, who he adored. Elizabeth, who physically resembled her mother, preferred the company of her father to Victoria. Ernest and Victoria both enjoyed entertaining and frequently held house parties for young friends. Their unwritten rule was that anyone over 30 was old and out. Formality was dispensed with, and royal house guests were referred to by their nicknames and encouraged to do as they wished. Victoria and Ernest cultivated friends who were progressive artists and intellectuals, as well as those who enjoyed fun and frolic. Victoria was, however, less enthusiastic about fulfilling her public role. She avoided answering letters, put off visits to elderly relations whose company she did not enjoy, and talked to people who amused her at official functions while ignoring people of higher standing who she found boring. Victoria's inattention to her duties provoked quarrels with Ernest. The young couple had loud physical fights. The volatile Victoria shouted, threw tea trays, smashed china against the wall, and tossed anything that was handy at Ernest during their arguments. While she was in Russia for the coronation of Tsar Nicholas, Victoria's affection for Cyril was also rekindled. She enjoyed flirting with him at the balls and celebrations that marked the coronation. Victoria and Ernest suffered a further blow in 1897 when Victoria returned home from a visit to her sister Queen Marie of Romania and reportedly caught Ernest in bed with a male servant. She did not make her accusation public, but told a niece that no boy was safe. From the stable hands to the kitchen help, he slept quite openly with them all. Queen Victoria was saddened when she heard of trouble in the marriage, but refused to consent to her grandchildren's divorce because of their daughter, Elizabeth. Efforts to rekindle the marriage failed and, when Queen Victoria died in January 1901, significant opposition to the end of the marriage was removed. Ernest, who had at first resisted the divorce, came to believe it was the only possible step. Now that I am calmer, I see the absolute impossibility of going on leading a life which was killing her and driving me nearly mad, Ernest wrote to his elder sister, Princess Louis of Battenberg. The divorce caused scandal in the royal circles of Europe. Tsar Nicholas wrote to his mother that even death would have been better than the general disgrace of a divorce. Cyril, all too aware of the ramifications of marrying a divorced cousin, kept a low profile. Ernie's sister Alex, now Empress of Russia, was appelled by the divorce and the insinuations about her brother's sexuality. She became in Victoria's avowed enemy.
In autumn 1903, tragedy struck. Victoria and Ernie's eight-year-old daughter died of typhoid. During a November 1903 visit to Tsar Nicholas and his family at their Polish hunting lodge, the doctor advised the Tsar's family to notify the child's mother of her illness, but it is rumored that the Tsarina delayed in sending a telegram. Victoria received the final telegram notifying her of the child's death just as she was preparing to travel to Poland to be at her bedside. Victoria's grief finally brought Cyril to her side. The couple married on 8 October 1905. Without the Tsar's permission, Tsar Nicholas responded to the marriage by stripping Cyril of his imperial allowance, expelling him from the Russian navy and banishing the couple from Russia. Victoria and Cyril began their married life in happy exile in Paris, and two daughters were born to them. In Russia, Tsar Nicholas was beginning to feel isolated. His brother, Grand Duke Michael, had also been banished for marrying a divorcee. Cyril's father, a pillar of the Romanov family, was dying, and the young Tsarevich, Alexis, was stricken with hemophilia. Nicholas invited Cyril to return to Russia and bring with him his wife and young family. Overnight, Victoria became the Grand Duchess Victoria Fyodorovna. Although she was a first cousin of both Nicholas, on her mother's side, and to Empress Alexandra, on her father's side, the relationship with them was neither close nor warm. Victoria fit in within the Russian aristocracy and the circle of her mother-in-law, Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna. As French was frequently spoken in high circles, Victoria never completely mastered the Russian language. The new Grand Duchess enjoyed entertaining at evening dinners and lavish balls attended by the cream of St. Petersburg society. When war broke out August 1914, Victoria formed an ambulance unit and traveled with it to the Polish front. At the end of 1916, following the murder of the Empress's controversial favorite, Grigory Rasputin, the Romanov dynasty began to splinter. Some believed Tsar Nicholas could be persuaded to make reforms, while others felt it was a lost cause. Victoria's husband was one of the first to declare himself. In March 1917, after a mutiny at the Kronstadt garrison, Cyril broke with the Tsar and pledged allegiance to the new government. While in Germany, Victoria showed an interest in the Nazi party, which appealed to her because of its anti-Bolshevik stance and her hope that the movement might help restore the Russian monarchy. She attended a Nazi rally in Coburg in 1922. She was likely unaware of the most sinister aspects of the Nazi party. As the revolution gathered momentum and the prospects of the Romanovs became clear, Cyril and Victoria, 40 years old and heavily pregnant with her third child, escaped to Finland. They spent the rest of their lives in exile, principally in France, where Cyril continued to use his imperial title and to plot for the eventual restoration of the Romanov monarchy. In late January 1936, Victoria was in Germany at a granddaughter's christening when she suffered a stroke. She died just over four weeks later and was buried in her family vault in Coburg. Cyril survived her by less than three years. The torch of restoration passed to their son, Vladimir, born in exile in Finland, and is still carried today by his daughter, Grand Duchess Maria Vladimirovna. <laughs>